Okay, uh, it's a good question. Um, it's a question I'm not going to answer, but I will tell you, my answer will be to explain to you why I don't want to answer the question. Okay. When you, I think when you, when you are a songwriter, you write music and you make albums, as I do, of course you have to give a title to everything. You have to give a title to your song, you have to give a title to your, your whole album. In a way, that's unfortunate, because when you title your album or you title your song, you're, you're telling your listeners, this is what the album is about. And in a case of an album like Hand Cannot Erase, the album is about many, many things, many things. And I could have called the album, for example, I could have called it The Loneliness of Living in the City. I could have called it that, but that would have told, that would have said, that would have been too specific about this is what the album is about. And of course the album is about more, the album is about the modern age, it's about confusion in the age of technology, it's about nostalgia, it's about childhood, it's about the internet, it's about the city, it's about many, many different things. So because of that, I don't want to be too um, specific with a, with a title. So. I compromise, I pick a title, I use a title which is very mysterious. Okay. And I like that. And the title has a is very ambiguous and it's not really clear what it means. I like that. Okay. So there is a no re uh, a real reason about the answer. There is. Because, uh, there is a there is an answer. There is okay. a reason why it's called that, but I don't want to tell you. Okay, that's perfect. <laughs> It is. It is a story. It does have a. It does have a, uh, a narrative flow to it. Okay. For me, the the uh, analogy is with a movie. It's with a film, um, or a, or a novel. <coughs> so it is something that is. Um, it has a flow. It has a structure, both musically and in the lyrics. So for me, there is a very clear story that starts in, in childhood, the, the childhood of the character, yeah. moves through her teenage years and moves through her life, finally arriving at this point where she lives in the heart of the city of London and begins to isolate herself from the outside world. So yes, it is very much a, uh, a story-driven album. Yeah. Uh, found in the forest. Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, Joyce, her name was Joyce Carol Vincent. Yeah. And she was found. Well, it's a true story. Yeah. The film is a documentary about her. She she was found dead in her in her flat in London in 2006, and she'd been there for two more than two years undiscovered. You don't know that it was in London because they they haven't pointed there. Yet, so. It was in London. So it was, a, it, was a, it was a story in the, in the UK, in the news, uh, nine years ago. But then three years ago, this documentary was released that um, explored the life of this woman and the death of this woman. And what was really interesting is I think when you first hear the story, you kind of, you, certainly I did, and I think most people do, you make the assumption that she must have been a little lonely old lady. She was young, she was attractive, she had lots of friends, she had family, and so that makes the story even more extraordinary that she could disappear and no one would miss her for more than two years. Yeah. And for me that was that became like a symbol. She became like a symbol of what it means to be living in the heart of the city in the 21st century with all the chaos and stress and the confusion and the terrorists and you know everything going on 
it's very easy for someone to disappear in a city and she becomes like a symbol of that for me. Yes, absolutely, yeah. Um, so this is what I call a, uh, a song of nostalgia. It's now, when you create a character, the character is obviously a, a, a fictional invention based on Joyce Carol Vincent, but she's a fictional character. And when you create a fictional character, I think so that the audience can really believe in that character, you have to give the character your own life, part of your own life. You have to give the character some of your own experiences, some of your own feelings, some of your own memories. So in this case, the character is um, talking about something that actually comes from my childhood. And it's a nostalgic song. It's a song about a moment in childhood when life did seem, just for a moment, that it could not be any better, that it, it was perfect. And I think there's something about being an adult and looking back at moments in your childhood that you didn't really, at the time you didn't really appreciate that life was as good as it as it was and so the song is about a, a, a story about her when she was 13 years old and she had this very very close relationship with a sister with, with a sister, sister yeah. and life was perfect and there are images in the song that come from from my life images of watching you know the boats on the watching boats pass by on the river at the twilight in a, in a summer and these are images that come directly from my childhood and they are crystallized moments in my mind when I think back and I think yeah that moment was life was perfect life was so content without stress without responsibility without fear and those feelings of nostalgia for childhood are also they also have a kind of melancholia to them because I think as you get older you realize you will never capture that feeling ever again so there is a sadness to it but it's there's also a sort of beauty in, in, in nostalgia yes that's the thing with nostalgia Nosta yeah. nostalgia is kind of by definition is also about loss yeah because it's moments that you can you can never really recapture those moments again so every every perfect moment passes uh, and dies so there is always that sadness too uh, yeah kind of it, this this record seems much more like um, a journey through my whole history yeah. that you know there are pop songs, there are long, more progressive pieces, there is electronic music, there is even some metal riffs, uh, there are singer, almost singer-songwriter kind of ballads, so it's very, very diverse record, it has lots of different aspects of my musical personality, um, and also as you said with Perfect Life, some new ones too. Yeah. So, so for me, it's it's um, it's probably also a more uh, accessible record, uh, a slightly warmer record. But I think a lot of it comes from the subject, the the story. The story, yeah. Um, this story is very much set in the 21st century. It's very modern. It's set in the heart of the city. So that obviously, straight away, I think more electronic sounds rather than vintage sounds. But there is also stories about childhood, so you have more nostalgic sounds too. So it's a kind of concept which enabled me to bring in all of these different feelings, styles, and sides of my own. I think more than the incident because the incident had a common subject but it didn't have a narrative story. Okay. You you didn't have to listen to it in only in this order. Okay. Uh, I think with this album to understand the story best yes. you you do need to read it like a book. 
yeah. or watch it like a movie, yeah. L- like a story or like a or like a film. Like okay. a film, yeah, yes, like right, so exactly. you, the the scenes in the film, and you have to watch the film in the right order, otherwise it makes yeah. no sense. But at the same time, I do like I like to think that there are also songs that you can listen to in isolation and just enjoy them as pop yeah. songs or a yeah. progressive song. So you don't have to follow the story, but it's certainly the best way to understand. Yes. Oh, I, I mean, I never feel, I never feel like I have to make music to to please other people, and I never feel I have to make music in a particular genre. Um, I'm very much aware, and of course I understand that my music is definitely coming from the progressive rock tradition. Of course I understand that, you know, that's the music I grew up with and I love that music. But at the same time, um, you know, as as we already discussed, this album has pure pop, it has electronic music, it has many different things. But then in some ways that is also the definition of, of progressive, you know. Progressive music is music which can bring in anything yeah, right. from metal to jazz to you know to um, you know electronic music. So I obviously I accept that the music is very much in the in the tradition of progressive rock. Um, I, I I try not to think too much about that pressure or that weight. It's very flattering that people would say you know I'm I'm like one of the leaders in that particular. <coughs> Uh, you know, scene of bringing progressive music into the, the modern age, but I don't. The, I don't. I'm not thinking about that when I'm creating music. The music comes very naturally, um, and the music so far has been always uh, a step forward with each album. As you, as we discussed, this album is very different to yeah, the other album. And I think that one of the things that really drives me is a kind of uh, aversion to re- repeating myself. Um, I, have this, I have this fear of doing the same thing twice. And that really is what drives me forwards. Now, you asked me what next, I'm not sure, but, because uh, oh, I obviously have the next year, I'll be touring for Han yeah. Cannot Erase. I don't know what next, but I know that it will be different again, yeah. okay. because it has to be to keep me excited. Really.